Hey everyone, how's it going? Nexius here, bringing you a really quick setup guide just before raiding in Mythic Plus. This is what I've been currently doing with my Windwalker Monk in terms of talents, gearing, stat priority. So, first of all, we're going to take a look at gearing. Um, Swift Roundhouse is our best monk trait. So if you can get Swift Roundhouse, I highly recommend it. It really increases our single target damage, which is quite valuable. I also have it on my shoulders here, stacking twice. It did get nerfed big time last week, but it's still our best trait. So you can get one or two if you want. If you want to stack three and then run a Serenity build, you can do that. Um, but personally, this is just my opinion. I'd rather not do that because the play style is boring. I like running dragon punch on top of that i also like having meridian strikes which every time we do a combo strike the cooldown is reduced on touch of death so i really like that effect and on top of that touch of death is one of our hardest hitting abilities currently in fact uh, touch of death and touch of karma i will not be surprised if either of them or both of them get nerfed sometime soon in the next couple weeks because they are just outperforming significantly so I want to show you guys an example here in my recount. This was on a world quest boss with like 30 other people. Uh, touch of death here, 52% of my damage. Touch of karma, 30% of my damage as well. You can see the damage done there. Um, basically, this is just an example of a world boss. Now, I have been monitoring my mythic dungeon bosses. This is not Mythic Plus, so it could change because Mythic Plus gets difficult. But regular Mythic, I've been watching. And whenever there's a boss where I can sit in a mechanic and redirect a lot of damage, for example, uh, let's head over to dungeons here at Taldazar. This is one guy I like to do it a lot on, Volcal here. So he drops a lot of stuff on the ground, Toxic Pools here. I will touch of Karma and sit in it for 10 seconds while continuing to damage him with Sun Kick, Fist of Fury. But while I'm doing all that damage with my rotation, touch of karma is constantly redirecting the pool damage on me to him and i can get easily a hundred thousand damage through touch of karma alone that's about 20 to 30 percent of my damage i believe so on average if you know the boss mechanics and you know situations where you can get a lot of damage done with karma it should average between 10 to 30 percent of your damage as for touch of death uh it's basically the same thing it's usually about 20% of your damage done. So these two abilities alone are doing so much damage compared to all of our regular rotation abilities, which is very important to know because like I mentioned, uh, I am expecting nerfs to either one of them or the other. And that's important to know because good karma is one of the reasons why. We'll get into that later uh, with uh, when we talk about talents and uh, choosing between and all that stuff. But first, gearing. So stat priority is agility as always. Then it's versatility. You can see here I started gemming versatility here. Uh, you want versatility. Then you want critical strike. So this cloak is a really damn good item. Uh, versatility, critical strike with the socket for more versatility. Then you want mastery and then haste is dead last. So that's your stat priority there. Agility, versatility, critical strike, mastery, then haste. Now, um, I do want to show you guys, I do have some enchants on. They are haste, but that's not because I'm enchanting wrong. You want to actually enchant versatility here. So, the reason why I have haste there is because I was leveling enchanting, as you can see. Uh, haste was green, and versatility wasn't at that time I enchanted them, but now it is. So, I would easily replace it now, but it's green, so I'm too cheap. I'm probably not going to get a level off it. So, because I'm too cheap, I'm not actually enchanting right now. If I get some raid items or mythic plus items... Uh, that are much higher item level, then I will enchant them. But for now, I'm just leveling enchanting, so I don't really care too much. Um, but anyway, yeah, you want to enchant versatility here. You want to socket with gems versatility. For your weapons, you do not want to get two of the same. So chances are you want to get a versatility weapon enchant, like versatile navigation. This will give you versatility. You probably want to get either mastery or um, critical strike as the other one here. So here's another critical strike. You do not want to get two versatility enchants. You want to get one of each. So make sure one of them is versatility, and then the other one is another stat. Probably critical strike or um, mastery, as I mentioned. So I think that pretty much covers enchants and gems. Um, for trinkets, right now, this is one of the best trinkets currently. It's not the best, but it's one of them. It's like top three. I got this on my first heroic run, I believe, I think. I can't remember. I just remember getting it from a dungeon. I know it was um, Shrine of Storms. It was from one of those bosses. It says it right there, Tide's Age Council. Uh, so this one is really good because it's like a miniature bloodlust. So you throw it down, and it gives you some haste here and some speed. And it's really useful if you can sit still. It's like a miniature bloodlust, which is really, really valuable. Now, 
I can't remember what the other good trinkets are, unfortunately, but there are a couple. There's one that gives uh, agility, but on use, it will give versatility. So you want something that will give you a big stat boost, usually, right? If it procs a primary stat like Mastery or Critical Strike, especially versatility, that's going to be a really good trinket. I know there's one. I can't remember the name, unfortunately. I don't have trinkets memorized yet. I usually don't pay attention to that stuff, but this time around, I'm focusing a little bit more towards trinkets. But there's a couple out there that will give you a big boost in versatility or a big boost in Mastery or Critical Strike or some kind of primary stat. So it's uh, really good in that case. This, I just know this one is one of the top three trinkets, so I'm currently holding on to it. My weapons really need to get upgraded. Wow, I'm still running a 289. Weapon drops have been awful this expansion. But anyway, back to the guide. So stats, all that stuff was covered. Uh, speaking of stats, one more thing. We have to cover food real quick. Now, assuming you're in a raid, you're probably going to get some kind of feast, right? Which will give you 100 in a stat. But let's say you have only regular food. You want to obviously get the versatility food, which I believe is Mondazi. Yep, there's one right there. And I think there's another one somewhere here uh, that gives versatility. Here we go. Spiced Snapper. So 55 versatility on that one. Mondazi is 41. Very small difference. I believe the Mondazi is much, much cheaper. So you can run with that one if you want. Just versatility food is the one you want to go. Um, real quick here. Of course, you want the Agility Flask. I have to remember what they're called. Uh, let me all tab and check my WordPad real quick. Okay, so the flask that you want is Flask of the Currents. Flask of the Currents. This is the agility one right here. So you want uh, that flask. They're really expensive right now. I will not be surprised if they go even higher when Mythic Plus and Rating comes out next week. As for the um, potions that you want, not the flask, but the potions, uh, there's one that does uh, damage, and then there's another one that gives you agility. Let me just check again the word pad. Okay, so Bursting Blood is one of them, so we're going to quickly look that up. Bursting Blood. I don't have any in my bags. I'm not buying any yet. So here we have Bursting Blood. Uh, this one will uh, infuse your blood with heat for 25 seconds and causes your attacks to do damage, and it will split amongst enemies. This is good for single target, and then you want the Agility one, which I don't remember what it's called, but... Uh, Battle Potion of Agility, yep, there we go. So this one will give you 900 Agility for 25 seconds. It's really good for AoE, so you can run uh, those two potions, whatever one you choose. Pretty expensive. Uh, we have the Battle Scarred Runes. So you got the Battle Scarred Augment Runes. These will give you Agility, Intellect, and Strength, so you might want to run one of those as well. And then we, as I mentioned, uh, the Feast and the Food as well. So that's pretty much what you want to run. Uh, nothing really too... Uh, but difficult there you know simple stuff always as usual the agility flask that's been a thing for years um stat food whatever your stat priority is simple to follow now let's talk about talents as the final piece so with the talents um g wave and chi burst are both okay like they're roughly even but chi burst is what a lot of players are running because it does generate chi in addition to doing aoe damage so if you're in a dungeon right and you pull like a trash pack especially mythic plus where a lot of packs are pulled you Chi Burst, and it will hit everything for a lot of damage, and you will generate two Chi, assuming you hit two targets. So if you hit one target, it's one Chi. If you hit two, it's two Chi. So you get two Chi on top of doing AoE damage. So it's really, really valuable in dungeons. If you're in a raid, you can afford to go Chi Wave. The healing and the damage are pretty decent. So if you want to run that for more frequent uh, rotations for extra abilities, since Chi Burst isn't used as often, then you can run it if you want. But Chi Burst is technically the better choice. For the next tier, you run whatever you want here. I always run Tiger's Lust because sometimes there are routes that you have to clear on yourself or a party member. But overall, I'm just so used to it for the last six years with PvP that I just use it anyway. The other two really don't matter. Uh, Slarity is like really the only other decent one. There's a good chance, very rarely, that you will actually use the full benefit of long movement speed from Chi Torpedo. So for that reason, I never really use it. For the next tier, I have seen some monks recommending Energizing Elixir for dungeons specifically, and then Fist of the White Tiger in every other situation. I just run Fist of the White Tiger 100% of the time. It's not only more fun in the rotation, but overall, I just like it. It's not the same as Strike of the Wind Lord. It doesn't do as much damage, and it generates chi instead of spending, and it does cost energy. So keep that in mind. It's not Strike of the Wind Lord. A lot of people like to compare it, but it's not. It's a completely different ability. So I like it because it adds an extra ability into the rotation, and it's not terrible. It's better than Energizing Elixir in all situations, except for dungeons, apparently. That's what a lot of other monks are saying. Um, but I run Fist anyway. My number one motto is Fun Before Min-Maxing. 
I just made that model up at the last second right now. And honestly, that's exactly how I look at this game. Remember, don't min-max every single thing, especially if you're not a Mythic Raider. It's not that big of a deal. So if you want to have more fun running a talent that you like, just run it. For the next talent here, this is a big, big deal. Ring of Peace and, well, Tiger Tail Sweep would be kind of nice, but Good Karma just adds so much damage. As I mentioned earlier with Touch of Karma, it's about 10 to 30% of our average boss fight damage when it comes to regular Mythic Dungeons. We'll have to see when it comes to Raiding and Mythic Plus, that might change, but currently with regular Mythic Dungeons, Karma with this talent is easily 10 to 30% of our overall boss fight damage. That's just way too much damage, especially if you know how to use it to gain that damage. I actually like this. I know a lot of monks are really mad about it, but I actually like this because it gives me some thought. Like, I don't want to be one of those guys, but WoW just seems so easy nowadays. I'm not talking about mechanics and mythic rating. I'm talking about the class, the rotations, the, how to play your class doesn't really take any more skill anymore, especially if you compare it to uh, expansions like Mr. Pandaria. So when I see little things like Touch of Karma that require insight, it requires knowledge of boss mechanics, it requires a specific way of timing it so you can maximize the damage out of it, and it's also a risk because now you don't have a defensive outside of Diffuse or Dampen Harm. You know, there's a bit of thought process and planning that goes behind it, and I like that kind of stuff. Maybe this is a bad example of that kind of planning, but the fact it has it, some kind of skill to it, some knowledge, some insight into boss mechanics, I like that. I know some monks don't like it, but I like it. But I also, at the same time, wouldn't be upset about it changing, but we'll have to see. For the next tier, we have Diffuse and Dampen Harm. These are what you want to run. Dampen Harm for physical damage. Diffuse Magic for magical damage. I like to run Inner Strength, um, at least with PvP and World Questing. But in a dungeon or a raid, these ones are going to be better to mitigate particular mechanics. So, especially if you're using Karma offensively to do more damage, you're going to need an extra cooldown. So, Magic Damage is Diffuse. Dampen is for physical. Just pick based off the boss fight or the dungeon in general and hopefully you'll be okay. For this tier, this one is roughly even. You can run hit combo for sustained damage, but overall it's not that good compared to the other two. Rushing Jadewind is really good on multiple targets, so if you want to focus on AoE damage, go ahead and run Jadewind. Zwen is okay in AoE as well, but he's mostly notable for his single target burst damage. So boss fights, for example, if you want to burst down bosses, he is a really good choice compared to rushing Jadewind. I'm seeing most monks running Zwen over Jadewind, but Jadewind is just as good if you want to run the extra AoE. I'm just seeing Zwen being picked up more often. Keep in mind, Mythic Plus has not come out yet, so Mythic Plus may revolve around AoE pulls, and if that's the case, Jadewind will be much more valuable compared to Zwen. But again, we'll have to see uh, when Mythic Plus comes out, um, how players are going to deal with the higher Mythic Pluses, with the uh, different affixes, all that different stuff. But currently, right now, I'm seeing pretty much every monk runs when. For the final tier, we have Spiritual Focus, which isn't good at all. You want to focus on either Serenity or Dragon Punch. Now, Dragon Punch and Serenity are basically the same when it comes to single target. But in AoE situations, Dragon Punch is actually better. And Serenity only turns out a little bit better when you have three Swift Roundhouse traits. So if you can get a Swift Roundhouse trait on your helmet, shoulder, and chest, then Serenity will be a little bit like a little bit more if you want to run that. But personally, not only is Serenity boring because you lose out on an extra ability, but again, I like running Meridian Strikes personally. And again, min-maxing only really matters if you're very, very, very competitive. But I like Dragon Punch, and I'm not that competitive in PvE. So for that reason, I stick with it. It's better in AoE. I get other fun aspects like Meridian Strikes on my chest piece here. I get more fun out of an extra ability in the rotation, more cleave damage. Just it's overall better. Um, so you can choose what one you want to run. They're pretty much even, but overall, I just significantly much more prefer Dragon Punch. So that's the PvE guide really quick. I'll make a PvP one soon. I'll make a rotation guide soon. Uh, let me know what you guys want to see in the near future here. If you want to recommend anything in the comments down below. Also, at the end of every Windwalker video, I will have a link to the playlist of all of my BFA. I almost said Legion, but Legion's over. All of my BFA Windwalker guides now and into the future will be in that playlist. So stay tuned for the end of the video here. Click on that playlist. You'll get to see all of the Windwalker stuff. Thanks, guys, as always, for watching and tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on my next video.